Happy New Year, everybody, and welcome back. As always, I am Mateo311, and this is your one channel for everything VR related. With so many new users getting into VR for the first time, I thought this was the perfect opportunity to create a beginner's guide to virtual reality in 2020. Now, this guide is ideal for anyone who is just getting into VR or if you're considering taking the plunge. For the experienced users, don't worry because I'm also going to include some pro tips. Now I'm going to be blasting through a lot of information, but as always, there will be timestamps, additional information, and links in the description. Now a lot of the topics in this video I've already covered in detail, and this is basically a Cliff Notes edition. If you end up finding any of this information useful, or you just like the video, go ahead, give it a thumbs up, leave some comments, consider subscribing, and dinging that bell. Okay guys, let's get into this. Now the obvious place to start is with your PC and your choice of VR headset. PC spec wise, the minimum I recommend for VR gaming in 2020 is the following. A Windows 10 PC, a fairly recent CPU with at least four cores and clock speeds around three gigahertz. An example being a Core i5-7500 or a Ryzen 5-1600 a GeForce GTX 1060, or an RX 580, and 16 gigs of RAM. Now your GPU should have a display port, and the PC will also need a USB 3.0 port. Now can you VR game with a weaker machine? Absolutely. You can get into PC VR gaming, with a slightly weaker machine. However, if you wanna be able to play the latest games at acceptable frame rates, you're gonna need this or better. VR gaming is extremely resource intensive. And my personal recommendation for a system is at least a GeForce 1080 or above and a fairly modern higher end CPU with a minimum of four cores. Now for your VR play area, it's recommended to have a space that is six and a half feet by six and a half feet. Again, you can game in a smaller area, you can stationary VR game in a chair, but that's gonna limit the experiences you can have. As of January 2020, there are three VR headsets that I recommend. And the primary focus for the remainder of this video will be those three headsets, but I will sprinkle in some other headsets here and there. Those three headsets include the Rift S, which is a great entry-level PC VR device. It's user-friendly, and you will have native support to Oculus exclusive games. The Valve Index, which is the headset of choice for high-end VR gaming experiences. It is, however, a bit harder to set up, less user-friendly, and much more expensive. You will also need to pair it with a high-end PC to get that high-end experience. Now, if you don't have a PC that meets those specs that I previously mentioned, but you still wanna get into VR, get an Oculus Quest. Do not, I repeat, do not get any other mobile headset. They are not the same. Do not pick up an Oculus Go if you're looking for some true VR gaming. One huge benefit of having an Oculus Quest, if later down the road you decide to pick up a VR-ready PC, the Oculus Quest can be plugged into the PC via a simple USB cable, allowing it to operate just like a Rift S. The Oculus Quest is currently the most bang for your buck you can get in the VR world. Now, before we get into setting up your VR device, I just wanna go over some abbreviations and terminology so you have a better understanding if you start looking into these devices. Now, first up is the FOV or field of view, and that's just basically how wide you can see when in VR. So a low FOV would lead to the sensation of looking through binoculars or wearing blinders. Now next is the Hertz. Now this is the refresh rate or how many images per second the VR device can display. Again, higher is better, but higher frames per second require more powerful computers. Next up is the screen door effect, something that was much more prevalent in first generation VR headsets. And that's the ability to actually see the space between each pixel. And it leaves you with the sensation that you are viewing an image through a screen door. You can see a very prominent grid. Now newer VR headsets, including the ones I'm talking about, the screen door effect is greatly diminished and isn't a huge issue anymore. Inside out tracking, this means that the device uses cameras on the outside of the headset 
to keep track of its position, orientation, and where the controllers are. Now, Oculus Inside Out Tracking does a fairly well job, but some of the other products, such as the Vive Cosmos or Windows Mixed Reality, tracking is subpar. The alternative is base station tracking, which is external devices which keep track of the headset and controllers. They are a more cumbersome setup, but it comes with superior tracking, especially when you are moving a controller really close to your face or behind your back. Six DOF or six degrees of freedom. Now you only want a headset with six degrees of freedom. If you see something that is three DOF, don't even consider it. Six degrees of freedom means every motion is captured. That is up, down, left, right, pitch, roll, yaw, everything you would expect in the real world. And the last term I'm gonna mention is the IPD or interpupillary distance. And this is just the space between your pupils. This is important because it helps you find the proper focal point for your VR lenses. Okay, let's move into setting up your new device. Now, first you wanna make sure that your graphics drivers are up to date. If you're not familiar with this, as a PC gamer, you should be. So Google, how do I update my graphics drivers? It's very simple. You should keep them up to date all the time, but don't be in a complete rush to update. Over the years, there have been some occasional bad driver releases. So if you get a notification that there is a new driver, I would wait about five days. Unless of course this is a game ready driver, a driver made specifically for a new release, then you probably should grab it. Pro tip. The Oculus Quest is a self-contained piece of hardware and you don't have to do any updates yourself. The device just might occasionally ask you to reboot it. So to begin with your VR setup, all of these products start with you downloading the proper PC software. And in the case of the Oculus Quest, you will be downloading software to your phone. The software installer will prompt you when you need to plug your device in. In most cases, there will be multiple device updates available and you're just gonna have to wait through all of them. This will include firmware updates. Now, you should never disconnect a device during a firmware update. I don't care what device it is. If you do, you can permanently break the device. Now the Valve Index may try to apply firmware updates to your controller, and it will want you to plug them into a USB port. The update is also specific to the left and right controller. So if you plug in the right controller when it's trying to do the left update, it will not update. Now, if you are setting up a Vive, Vive Pro, or Valve Index, you also need to set up base stations. These two devices will track your headset and controllers throughout your play area, and I highly recommend you mount them. If the base stations are moved at any time, you will have to rerun the room scale setup. Under no circumstances should you move a base station when it is running. The room scale setup is the final step when setting up a Vive, Vive Pro, or Valve Index. Basically, you are tracing your room and letting the computer know what your physical boundaries are so you don't smack into a wall. When setting up room scale, the arrow will show you which way is considered forward in VR. If you have a TV or anything sensitive in your room, I recommend you face forward away from the TV. This way you're less likely to run up and punch it. SteamVR does an excellent job letting you know when you're approaching that boundary, but I have clipped a wall on more than one occasion. So if you have a TV or anything, I would set the boundary at least a few inches in front of that TV, if not further. The Oculus Quest and the Rift have a similar setup and that is the creation of a guardian. You will be able to see the outside world and basically you just trace the floor, marking out your safe to play zone. The Oculus products will remember these guardian boundaries, which is a real advantage if you are switching from room to room frequently. Now, before you get into your VR tutorials, there's one more thing I recommend you do right off the bat, and that is adjust the IPD. If you're using an Oculus Quest, it will actually tell you to do this on one of the initial introduction screens. Both the Oculus Quest and Valve Index have a slider located on the bottom front of the headset, and you could just move that back and forth until the screen looks as clear as possible. HTC products have a knob on the right hand side that you can turn. And you will also notice that while you are adjusting this, you will get an on-screen display telling you what the actual IPD value is. If you happen to measure your IPD, well then just set it to that value. Otherwise, just adjust it until you find what looks the best. 
The Oculus Rift S does not have a physical adjustment knob. It uses a software IPD, so you will have to go into the settings and adjust the value there. If your IPD is off, you may see things like slight blurring or double vision, and it will also increase eye strain, preventing you from using the headset for long periods of time. Now go ahead and check out those VR tutorials. Take your time, feel how natural VR is, and I guarantee you something as simple as a tutorial will be fun and exciting. Now I do want to mention that there are features that are kind of buried in Steam VR that you will not come across in the tutorial, so at some point in the future, just go ahead to the settings area, poke around, there are options to modify your chaperone boundaries, color, how aggressive they appear. You can enable pass-through cameras, so you have the ability to check out the outside world while you are in VR. And you can even change the environment that Steam VR loads into. But I know right now what you want to do is get into some games. That's what it's all about. Now, if you're getting into VR, you undoubtedly heard of games like Boneworks, As God's Wrath, Stormland, and I have to say, they might not be the best introduction for you. Why is that, you may ask? Well, because you don't have your VR legs yet, and you absolutely do not want to experience motion sickness. Now, at some point in time, you are most likely going to experience at least a mild, uncomfortable sensation when testing everything out in VR. The good news is 95% of people completely adjust and experience little to absolutely no motion sickness at all. The key is to start off slow and avoid using free locomotion at first. Now the most common forms of locomotion are room scale, where you just walk around the room naturally and your movements are captured one to one. There's teleportation where you click a key and usually the screen will fade out for a second and fade back in and you appear in the new location. And the final most common form of locomotion is free locomotion. This is how you play in a traditional flat screen game. You move the left analog stick and your character moves. The first time you use free locomotion in VR, it might feel really awkward. And the best tip I can give you is the second you feel any discomfort, stop and get out of VR and take at least a short break. Sometimes you might also notice that when you've been playing VR for a long period of time and then leave VR, you start feeling strange when you're back in the real world, and this is completely normal. So to start off your VR journey, I recommend the following games. Space Pirate Trainer, Super Hot, Moss, Robo Recall, Star Wars, Vader Immortal, and The Gallery Episodes 1 and 2. So this includes a bunch of different style games, and the mechanics are all fairly gentle. Do not make your first VR experience something like getting on a roller coaster. Just don't do it. Now when you feel comfortable in VR and want to start testing your VR legs, there are some free games you can test with. And even Vader Immortal has the option for free locomotion in the settings. So you could just go back to that game, enable the setting, and see how it feels to you. Now the first free game I recommend is Rec Room. And again, you could go into the settings of this game and change it from teleportation to free locomotion and really get a feel for what it's like playing a multiplayer competitive game, running around and shooting with free locomotion on. Now, independent of locomotion options, the free games that I recommend that every VR owner should have include Rec Room, VR Chat, Poker Stars VR, Big Screen Beta, and finally, The Lab. You can get countless hours of fun with just these free games. You could also go online and watch movies and meet people. All right, you're all set up. You got your games. What else is there? Well, we're going to get into some slightly advanced things. And this is third-party applications that you're most likely going to want at some point in time. Now, Oculus puts out a ton of exclusive titles, but don't worry, if you don't own an Oculus headset, you can play them with an application called Revive. Now, I will link my Revive tutorial in the description. It's a very simple setup. Basically, you'll see a new icon in Steam VR, and you could select Oculus exclusive games from it. Obviously, you will still need the Oculus software and you have to purchase the game, but now you have the ability to play them. Now for the Oculus Quest, I recommend you install SideQuest on your computer. This allows for the installation of non-official third-party applications, and besides having some really nice features, there's also a ton of content you could download, including free games. Now finally, we're gonna discuss accessories. 
We can easily spend another 10 minutes on this topic, but basically I'm just gonna let you know that there are VR accessories for everything. If you find that your headset is getting too sweaty and it's no longer hygienic, there are solutions. If it's not comfortable, there are multiple solutions. If the cable is tangling you up, the HTC products have wireless adapters, a lot of people use pulley systems, and there's even products that make the storage of your headset that much nicer. Now, obviously, I will put my recommendations and some additional links in the description, but there is one more extremely important thing you guys need to do. You need to thumbs up this video and subscribe to this channel so you stay informed on everything VR. I'm putting out four videos a week. That includes news, gameplay, and discussions like this. In all honesty, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it helps some new VR people out there. Above all else, this channel is about sharing a hobby I love with the world. VR gaming is absolutely amazing, and I just want to share that experience with you guys. Okay, everybody, I will see you on next time.